Hello, and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. My very first video on this channel started off telling the tale of a Reddit user who grew up with his parents, aunt, and uncle in a multi-family home he later came to find was a renovated funeral parlor. This same man has been generous enough to post about his time seeing a psychiatrist at the age of 13 when he lived in that home with his extended Irish family. He chose only entries that include the frightening happenings he dealt with while living there. He also includes notes from his present-day self, commenting on his childhood situation. This will be a two-part series that I'm calling Diaries from Hell, dedicating this week's entire video to part one. So, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared. Together, 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 together. One thing I would like to stress, this is not creative writing. These are taken from a mental health journal that I kept while growing up. In April of 1986, my psychiatrist asked me to focus on things that frightened me or made me uncomfortable. This was what he thought was my significant problem, and I agree, it was. The entries are grouped by month and year, not individual days, because I'm only including entries with paranormal happenings, and these things didn't happen every single day. Okay, here we go. April, 1986. It's morning, and I couldn't be happier. Last night was scary. I woke up and it was very dark. I heard scratching from inside the closet. I turned the light on in my room to make sure my hamster hadn't escaped. She hadn't. She was still in her cage. I checked the closet and it was closed. I turned off the lights and went back to bed. I tried to go back to sleep, but I kept hearing sounds. It sounded like the closet latch. I think it was being lifted up. I heard it click. After the latch clicked, it felt like something was in the room with me, like I was being watched. I covered my head with my blankets, but I heard something moving about the room. My hamster was so quiet, I thought something might have harmed her, but she's okay. The sound in my room was moving around, and it was down by my toy chest at the foot of my bed. I heard my G.I. Joe fall over. I'm not alone. I heard my dad wake up and get ready for work, so that means it was 4 a.m. He always farts and sneezes first thing. That's how I know it's him in the hallway. I'm alone in my room now. I was able to get some sleep after hearing dad move around in the house. I told dad when he got home from work what had been happening in the night. He went and opened my closet to show me that there was nothing in it. It was very cold in that closet. He thinks I might have dreamed the whole thing. Mom does too. Could I have? No. I closed that door before bedtime, but when I awoke, the door was not latched and it was slightly open. Even now, with the sun up as I'm writing this, something is watching me from that closet. I know it. There's also a rip in my Transformers sleeping bag at my feet. End of entry. May 1986. Early evening. I helped my dad cut grass today. After that, we had to put the tools and equipment away. Unfortunately, they have to go back in the basement. I hate that basement. It doesn't feel right. The air is heavy and it smells stuffy like moss and very old pennies. I was helping Dad put things away when he asked me if I saw something move along the wall. I think he was trying to tease me because I was so jumpy about being that far into the basement. What I didn't want to tell him, I did see something move along that wall. It moved from the corner, then up the wall, and then it was gone. The worst part about the basement is the storage area by the stairs. It's really dark, and there are no lights in there to turn on. 
I won't go in there, ever. I won't even shine a flashlight in there. I have nightmares about that creepy room sometimes. And in them, the floor is bloodstained. I also believe that whatever is in there has been up in my closet at night. It comes up from the storage room in the basement. I stay as far away from the opening as possible because also in my nightmares, something in there will pull me in if I get too close. We finish putting all the tools away and Dad always has me go up the stairs before him because some of the old wooden stairs are loose and he wants to catch me in case I fall. Once we make it out of the basement, Dad will padlock the door. We share a key with Aunt G and Uncle J, my father's aunt and uncle. We usually run into Uncle J after cutting the grass. He's a nice guy. He always warns me about going in that basement alone. Dad says he's just trying to scare me, but I take him seriously. Anyway, I'm excited because Mom's making casserole for dinner tonight. Later that evening. Mom asked me to help make the casserole, and that meant I had to go into the pantry to get the mac and cheese and soup. I don't like the pantry either. It reminds me too much of my closet. I really wanted that casserole, though, so I went into the pantry and tried to pull the light cord, but I couldn't find it. I felt something touch my hand, and I jumped back quick and closed the pantry door. I was trying to calm down when Mom came and said it was just my imagination. I tried again and found the light cord. The light went on and I gathered the stuff that I needed. I found it odd that I could smell the basement in the pantry. And just then, along the back of the pantry wall, I saw a large gray pile of what I thought were worms squirming around. I dropped the stuff on the floor and stepped back. My mother came over and she must have seen it too because she gasped and threw a can of soup at it. She then closed the door and called for my dad. Mom said she thought she saw a squirrel or something in the pantry. Dad had a look but no squirrel, nothing. The whole time we were cooking, she and I both kept an eye on that pantry door. Mom told me later that maybe we both have issues with our imaginations. Later that evening, as I'm writing this, I'm in my bedroom burping up casserole. I'm a bit worried about tonight, as I was in the basement earlier today, and it likely saw me. I know what that means for tonight. The next morning, helping Dad cut the lawn must have helped me sleep through the night. My bedroom door is open, and I can hear my parents talking in the kitchen. Mom is asking Dad if he can figure out why all the kitchen cabinets were wide open when she woke up. I heard him say, maybe the house is settling, or maybe I hadn't closed them tight enough after helping clean up after dinner. At the close them tight remark, I glanced over at my closet door, and it was again partially opened. The hairs stood up on my arms. I jumped at the sound of three knocks at my bedroom door. I looked over, expecting to see one or both of my parents, but no one was there. I then heard three more knocks, this time from the closet door. I bolted from my bed, kicked the closet door closed, and ran into the kitchen to be with my parents, knowing full well I couldn't explain to them that I had made sure that the now open cabinets and my closet door, for that matter, were closed last night. End of entry. June 1986. Afternoon. My parents got me the Dungeons & Dragons red box. I'm really excited because last summer I got a chance to play at summer camp and it's really fun. Comment from current day poster. Yeah, I'm still an epic nerd. My therapist said I needed something to focus my imagination on, to give me an outlet. I'm not sure why I need a wall plug, but he's the doctor. Comment from Current Day Poster. Wow, I was a nerd and an idiot. My cousin is coming over today to spend the weekend. I'll try to let him know what's been going on here at night, but no one seems to believe me when I tell him of the things that I'm seeing. 
except Uncle Jay. Evening, my room. My cousin will be here until Sunday. We spent a bunch of time reading the Dungeons and Dragons rule book. My cousin wanted to tell scary stories. I told him, if we're unlucky, we'll be in one. And I explained to him what I'd been seeing lately. He laughed it off, but he requested that we use a nightlight. Nighttime, my room. My parents had gone to bed and my cousin and I had finished going over the rule books, coloring the dice and trying to figure out our first characters. We lost all track of time and I soon discovered it was almost 1.15 in the morning. We decided it was time to turn in. I checked the closet and it was closed and latched. We had sleeping bags on the floor, Transformers for me, Spider-Man for him. We continued to goof off a bit when the room got very cold and we both heard a loud click. We peered over and saw the closet was no longer completely closed. We also noticed that the nightlight was getting dim and the room darker. Suddenly, the room went pitch black as the nightlight went out completely. There are two large windows in my room, but the moonlight wasn't coming in. Suddenly, the nightlight came back on and the closet door was open even wider. And we both saw something in the dark standing in the corner near the window. The nightlight went out again and the room got dark, except this time you could see moonlight coming in. And in the moonlight, we both saw what looked like a set of three-fingered hands reaching out of the darkness. Grabbing our sleeping bags, we ran into the living room, turned on all the lights, and camped as close as we could to my parents' bedroom door as possible. The house fell silent after that. That is, until my dad tripped over my cousin after he got up to go to work. He was about to chew us out for making so much noise that early in the morning, but the sound of my closet door slamming distracted him and he went to check it out. When he got back, he said he'd fix the latch on the closet later and that we shouldn't be reading monster books so late at night, blaming it on Dungeons and Dragons. Oddly though, he said we'd spend the rest of the weekend at my grandmother's house. My cousin vowed to never spend the night at my home again. Sunday evening. Dad brought me home after spending the weekend with my grandparents. It was honestly the best night's sleep I had gotten in a long time. Quiet, calm, and the house smelled like grandma's cooking. As we got closer to home, just seeing it, I felt sick to my stomach. On entering, I actually stopped and dropped my overnight bag. The house felt different. Before I left with my cousin, it felt spooky and frightening, but now the only thing I could feel was seething anger. End of entry. July, 1986. I'm out of therapy. I'm feeling better about myself and more confident. Weekly school meetings with the Dungeons and Dragons Club became meetings as a group of friends during the summer to play. I can honestly say I'm starting to feel more like a kid, or should I say a teenager, as even I've noticed I'm becoming a bit more observant of girls, at least when I'm away from this house. It's now late July, long, hot nights with little sleep. Everyone is always upset and angry when at home. We need a few days of rain to cool off the house and tempers, or something's gonna give. Nighttime, my room. It's hot and humid. None of the fans are helping. Dad was working on fixing the AC in the living room, but he went to bed for the night. Our neighbors are outside. I can hear them talking and smell whatever it is they're cooking. Comment from present day poster. They were not cooking, they were baking, themselves. This was my first time smelling weed. I'm just waiting for exhaustion to take me. Early morning, my room. Something hit me in the night. It felt like a punch and I woke up with my face and chest hurting. My glow-in-the-dark clock said it was 3.07 a.m. I got out of bed, flipped on the room lights, and my eyes immediately went to the closet 
and to my surprise, it was latched and closed. I noticed that my hands had blood on them, and there was blood on my chest. I headed to the bathroom, closed the door, and checked out the damage in the medicine cabinet mirror. I had a split lip and a dark mark by my mouth. The lip is where the blood came from. There were three marks on my chest, as big around as a quarter, and they hurt. I'm sure they'll be bruised by tomorrow, as well as my face. For some reason, I got angry looking at my reflection. It felt like every bad thought and negative feeling I've ever had about myself came back ten times over and all at once. In disgust of seeing myself and how I was feeling, I opened the cabinet door so I wouldn't have to look at my reflection. The cabinet mirror was then facing the mirror behind the door. That caused an infinity reflection due to the mirrors reflecting in on each other, and it meant that I was seeing multiple reflections of myself. At my limit, I angrily threw the towel over the mirror. I could feel the pressure in the room subside considerably once the mirror was covered. I tried to calm myself by going through a few of the coping techniques I learned from my doctor. I finished cleaning myself up and then exited the bathroom. Before turning the lights out in the bathroom, I happened to look over towards the kitchen the door leading to the sunroom and the back stairs was fully opened. I shut off the lights, but there was still a glow coming from the dining room. The lights over the dining room table were on, but not on. What I mean by that is they were glowing dimly, even though we don't have dimmers in the house. I was still feeling angry from the episode in the bathroom, and I couldn't stop myself from saying what was on my mind. Go to hell! The lights faded out, but I still felt watched. Suddenly, my father was there. He asked me what I was doing up, and he flipped the lights on, and then he saw me. Thinking that I may be self-harming, he checked out the marks in my swollen lip. He questioned me loud enough that it woke my mother. That angry feeling flooded the room again, and the lights once again went dim. My dad looked at them with a, what the hell? look on his face just as my mom entered the dining room. I almost jumped out of my skin as my 100-pound, 5-foot-2 mother lunged at my 6-foot-tall, 325-pound father, howling at him to leave him alone, don't touch him. I hit the light switch for the dining room and the dim lights now came on in full brilliance and I saw my mother had her hands on my father's face, her fingernails digging into the back of his ears with blood running down his neck, and my father was gripping her shoulders. I forced myself between them to split them apart, telling my mother that Dad didn't do this and explained what had happened. I asked them both if they couldn't now see that something wasn't right with the house. That seemed to have cleared their minds. Mom said she didn't know what came over her. She had just gone into full Mama Bear mode Dad cleaned the blood off his neck, and then we all talked. It seems my parents might finally be grasping that something else might be at work here. The next day. My parents have worked things out. My father spoke with Uncle Jay, and we decided we needed a vacation. We packed up a few things and took off for New Hampshire for five days. End of entry. Note from Present Day Poster. This creeped me out, as I had completely forgotten about this episode until I read it again. I remembered that my parents were fighting one day, but I didn't remember why, and I didn't remember being physically injured. As noted before, my dad was a big guy. What I wouldn't find out until after his death, he was also a Vietnam vet. He didn't talk about it at all with us, but it did explain a lot of his behavior. He slept in short shifts and, after we moved, he would go on long drives at night by himself. It's amazing that my father restrained himself so well, or that incident could have ended very badly. Maybe that's what that thing wanted to happen. Here's some further information that I got from my father in 2013, when I was 40 years old. I had reached the point where, as an adult, I started talking to my dad about all the crazy things that happened to us when I was growing up. 
It was at this point that Dad revealed that the house was a funeral parlor before being purchased and renovated into a multifamily home. According to my father, the activity started when I was very young, just a toddler. It began one evening after a friend of my aunt's felt that there was something about the house and she wanted to hold a seance. After that, the feeling in the house changed from just creepy to downright horrific because my aunt realized that the seance unleashed something. Unfortunately, she doubled down on the issue by having that same friend come in and do a cleansing. They didn't know what they were doing and just reenacted something they read in a book, according to my dad. They likely did it wrong and just ended up making things worse. My dad believed that moving was the best option because nothing seemed to follow you once you left the house. To that end, my parents tried to save for a down payment on a new house, but a string of health issues would keep undercutting the savings and our ability to leave. My father also believed that he and mom were not in control of their emotions while in that house. When we went on vacation, everything went back to normal between my parents and I. Also, while we were on vacation, my uncle had the house blessed by a priest. And this seems to have dialed things down a bit, but only for a while. That changed again, two years later. July, 1988. Afternoon, outside the house. Hello again, my journal. It's been a while. Things have been quiet at home. Creepy but quiet. I've returned to you today because I was helping my aunt and uncle load food up for the family barbecue. While carrying the trays of food, I noticed movement in the basement window. My mom and dad were outside loading the car and my uncle was behind me. What I saw was approximately level with the basement window, which would make it about six feet tall, about the height I am now. It had a human-like shape. Its head moved quickly side to side. My uncle saw it too. And our conversation went like this. Uncle, you see it too, don't you? Me, I think so. Uncle, it's been biding its time looking for a way out. Me, yes, but what is it? Uncle, our clan call them demons. They're not of nature. They find and feed on fear, anger, and sorrow. They sow the emotions like crops and then harvest the field. Well, journal, it looks like I won't be sleeping for the rest of my time here. My parents are saving for a new house. Nighttime, returning home from the barbecue. We've returned home to something completely unexpected. Several police officers are on the front porch. The police are talking to my dad and my uncle. My dad came over and told my mother to take me to my grandparents. Apparently, a kid broke in and damaged the place, and they're checking for missing property. We're headed to my grandmother's for the night. The next morning, at grandmother's house. Dad returned around mid-morning. He told us that we will likely have to stay here for a while. Nothing was taken, but there's damage and blood all over the house. A neighbor called the cops when they noticed a broken window. My dad then went on to tell us what happened, to the best of anyone's knowledge. Someone shattered the basement window. I had a bad feeling because that was the window where I saw that demon. Dad continued. They apparently cut themselves on the glass, crawling through the broken window, got a pry bar from the tool wall, and pried the basement door open. The cops found the padlock, still locked, on the floor. Then, they damaged all the doors through the entire house, except for the attic and the living room. Mom asked my dad what he thought would have happened had we all been home when this occurred. The color drained from Dad's face, and his words chilled me. I don't know. End of entry. September 1988, afternoon. It took us a few weeks, but Dad and I helped my uncle get the doors repaired. On our floor, the bathroom door was undamaged, but all of the other doors had been hacked by the pry bar. My uncle was a bit skittish about working on the house, as sometimes doing so gets things riled up. But we finished in relative peace. 
being that it was still early in the afternoon and not dark, the three of us took the tools down to the tool board in the basement. As we passed by the steps for the storage room, the temperature coming out of that room was at least 20 degrees colder. My glasses instantly fogged over and I almost tripped and fell into the storage room. My uncle caught me from behind and pulled me back. We quickly gathered the tools I dropped. My uncle, talking quietly under his breath, said, Do not look in the room, lad. Seek not the demon. We got the tools over to the board, only to discover that the tools that had been hanging there were now all on the floor. We quickly gathered the tools and put them back on the board. Then all three of us heard heavy footsteps behind us on the basement stairs. My uncle decided that we needed to use the auxiliary stairs that brought us up a narrow stairway to the first floor. What I always thought was a closet was actually a hidden stairwell to his living room. As we locked that door, something pounded on it three times. We ran to the main basement door, pulled it closed and put on the padlock, and just as we did, something pounded on that door three times. We backed away as the door rattled against the frame. Then it stopped. I had a quick word with my uncle. Me. I thought it was gone. Uncle. No, lad. Dormant, maybe. We all went upstairs to wait in the living room. My uncle for my aunt, who was out with friends, and my father and I for my mother, who was working late. Half an hour later, my mother arrived home, and I went down to greet her. As I met my mother at the door, before I could even greet her properly, she looked past me over my shoulder and exclaimed, What is that? This is when something hit me hard from behind, launching me up against my mother, sending her sprawling backwards and down the stairs, with me landing on top of her. Comment from Present Day Poster Now, at the time I was 15 and stood eye to eye with my father at 6 feet and 200 pounds, give or take a cheeseburger or three, I played a lot of football and hockey and I knew how to take a hit even when I didn't see it coming. My mom was 5'2 and 100 pounds, if that. Quick math. Mass times acceleration equals a first-class ticket to mom aboard the pain train. The Aftermath A trip to the ER for me and mom. I had two bruised ribs, a bruised back, and a dislocated left shoulder. My mother had four bruised ribs, a sprained wrist, a fractured arm, and a sprained ankle. The damage, while not as severe as it could have been, all but wiped out the savings my parents had for moving. The official story was that I tripped on a non-existent throw rug at the bottom of the stairs, causing the fall. Back at home recovering, I asked my mother what she had seen right before it happened. She took out a Celtic cross necklace and held it tightly in her hand and said only one word. Darkness. End of entry. This brings us to the end of part one of Diaries from Hell. I thought I had problems growing up sharing a room with an older sister. I'd rather that than share a house with a demon intent on devouring my very soul. Let me know in the comments what you think of these stories so far, and get set for the next part to be uploaded soon. If you'd like to check out the original video featuring the first story that I recorded from this poster, you can find the link in the credits below or click on the video listed on the screen above. I look forward to seeing you all here again next week. So until then, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>